Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on programming video log and I'm starting out a little bit different today because I'm starting out on my phone, my Android phone. And the reason for that is because I'm going to show you how to install a progressive web app or a mobile web app or just a web app to your Android device. Should work the same way for iOS or at least similarly, but I'm going to be showing you the Android way to do it today with the Chrome browser for Android. So this is my web app. I'm serving it off of my own server. That's why I don't have a secure connection because I didn't install the certificate authorities. You don't need to to get this to work. You just have to have a private key and um, a certificate set up. This way you can get encryption and served securely, but you don't have to have a certificate authority. So that's the reason it's not showing that green lock at the top of my URL bar there. But everything should work fine. If you want to learn how to set that stuff up, I have other tutorials on how to set up a secure HTTPS server using Node.js and how to create your own secure self-signed certificate authority, private key, and self-signed certificate. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to install this thing to the home screen. And all you do is you go into your options in Chrome and you click Add to Home Screen. It'll prompt you for what you want to name it, that little image there, the web app image, is my icon that I'm using. To find that in my manifest.json file, which I'll show you a little bit later. And now I can go to my, my home screen, and as you can see, I now have an icon. This is awesome because, I didn't want to bring that up, this is awesome because now your users don't have to go through their browser and search for your website every time. All they got to do is install the home screen, and then whenever they want, boom, Look at that, shows you a splash screen and you are in your full screen. If you prefer, you can have a full screen experience, which feels really native. It feels a lot more native than being on your browser and having to deal with the browser window. In addition, you can't tell, but I'm tilting my phone right now and I have auto change orientation or whatever you want to call it on. So normally my phone would change orientation, but now it doesn't. It just stays in portrait mode because I've defined that in my manifest.json file as well. So the only thing I will make a note of here is this bar at the top with the little security icon there saying it's not secure. That will go away if you install a home screen from a secure website. So if you're hosting on GitHub pages or some other secure hosting thing, all that will be taken care of for you. And if you want to make your own development server, check out my other two tutorials. I'm going to put a link to them in the description and it will take care of all that. But Basically, everything works great. Now I'm gonna switch over to my computer and show you guys the code I use to do this. So stay tuned. Alrighty, so now we're on my computer and I'm gonna show you all the code that I used to create this little web app. So there's only two things that you really need to worry about. That's the HTML start page, which I called webapp.html, and your manifest.json file. So inside the HTML of your, your page content, whatever that may be, what you want to do in order to link it up with your manifest file, which is what Android or iOS is going to use to create your tab on the home screen and allow you to launch from the home screen, you're going to want to include this link with an href to your manifest.json file and set the rel attribute up to equal manifest. It's really the only new thing that's being introduced here in terms of you know, how to create a mobile web app. Everything else is pretty generic. The only other thing that I might make a note of is this. And basically, you always want to set your, your meta viewport tag when you're developing for mobile or websites that will be seen on mobile and desktop because you're going to want things to, sm to scale smoothly and nicely. So this just allows your website to be viewed in a nice scaling fashion on mobile and on desktop. So here's my CSS, not really important, just CSS. And here is my manifest. This is the most important part of this tutorial. So I've combined a bunch of different, I guess you can call them tags here, or attributes. And these are just ones that I got from documentation, the documentation on this from Mozilla. And they all seem kind of pertinent, even though you can whittle this down. You don't actually need all these to get this to work. I just thought... You know, it's in the documentation, so it's probably best practice to have, you know, like an author attribute, even though you don't really need it. So anyway, I'm just going to go over these. Author, obviously, 
who wrote it. You put whatever you want there. Put your name if you're the author. You know, background color is actually pretty important. This is the color that will be seen in your splash screen when you start up your app from the home screen. I chose white. That's really boring. But the reason I chose white is because I've experienced problems with a flickering white screen between your loading screen or your splash screen and the actual rendered content of your app. So the problem basically is like this. You, you click on your, your thumbnail, it launches the app, you see the splash screen, and then for a split second before your page content is rendered, there's a white screen. And I have no idea how to get rid of it. My solution was just to set my splash screen background to white. That's really lame in my opinion, but I couldn't figure out a way around it. And as far as I can tell, even the examples on like Google developers website um, had this white flicker problem, at least for me on my phone, it might be fixed on your phone, you might never experience this problem. But if you do, and you can't figure out how to fix it, this is just one way to fix it. I figured who's it hurting the splash screen is really generic. Anyway, all it does is display your icon and your app name you don't have much control anyway, so why not just eliminate that white flicker? It makes your app look so much worse. So that's what I did there. Hopefully, they'll resolve this or have some documentation come out on how to fix it in the future because I could not find anything. So that's my little my little sidetracked rant on this. But that's background color, and you set it to define the background color of your splash screen. Description is another one you don't really need, but it's good to set just a description of your application good for people to know that display display is really important so I've set it to full screen that's why my app was in full screen when I ran it in my Android device you can also set this to I'm not I don't know the values off the top of my head but you can set it to a few other values one displays the URL bar at the top I think that kind of defeats the purpose of having a mobile web app experience you're supposed to make it feel like you're not in a browser but you have the option to keep the UR, the URL bar. You also have the option to allow people to see their navigation bar. So that's just that bar at the top of your phone that has like your battery life icon, your notifications, your Wi-Fi signal icon, all that cool stuff that notifies you of things at the top of your screen. And possibly even the, uh, the navigation buttons at the bottom of your screen. So like your back button, your go to home screen button and your running apps button. So that's what that does. If you're gonna make a game, I suggest full screen. Icons, this is important. I only have one set, but if you're gonna actually do this right, you're gonna want a bunch of them set. Um, 192 by 192 was, I read somewhere that it was the best size for Android. Android likes 192 by 192. It's also fine with .png. If you're developing for iOS, you're going to want to have something else because I read that on iOS, it actually doesn't allow for transparent backgrounds. So I guess you still could use PNG, but you might want to watch out for that transparent background problem. Not sure. Really, I'm not sure about iOS because I don't have an iOS device. I don't test on iOS. I don't really know anything about it. So if you're looking for how to develop on iOS, you should probably find another tutorial. If you're here for Android, though, this will definitely work. So this is my icon. It's good to have multiple sizes. For example, if I want an icon up here in my tab, it would be good to have another size defined. But, you know, this is a simple application here, so I just defined one for ease of reading the code. Manifest version. This, I think, is actually used for how to parse the manifest. And I got this straight out of documentation. It actually told me, um, and I read this, this is October 2017. It said to use manifest version two and it has nothing to do with the version of your, your actual manifest or your program. It has to do with, I think, how iOS and Android read your manifest. But you don't actually need to include that to get it to work, which I guess means there's a default value in case you don't include this, but... I included it, you probably don't need it, but the documentation said to put it in there, so I did. Name and short name, I'm not really sure what the difference is. They both seem to do the same thing. Um, you just put the name of your app. Most tutorials that I looked at just had the name duplicated, and it doesn't really seem to change anything if you change one or the other. It just you know displays the name you put in there, so... 
that's basically just the name of the app, and it's the default name that you're prompted to name your your thumbnail when you are prompted to install it to the home screen. So good to have like your good basic app name in there. Orientation, this is another really important one, just as important as the display mode. Orientation just tells your operating system how you want to display this. So I chose portrait, which is why my device displayed my web page in portrait mode. You could choose landscape, and there may be another value as well, but I'm not really sure. But basically, portrait and landscape are the two that you want to have. So, you know, pick whichever one you want. Then down here, very important as well, the start URL is the URL of the page that we are going to serve when we start up our web app. So after that splash screen, that loading screen is done, this is the page that's going to be rendered, and this is what we're going to see. So I set mine up to be webapp.html, which is just my home page. It's just this guy right here. Then we have theme color. Theme color, if you do decide to, to use something besides display full screen up here, you're going to see that nav bar at the top of your phone, or you're going to see your address bar, your URL bar. And this will set the color of that URL bar or your address bar to kind of make your app feel more native and like you have more control over what the user sees. But really, it's just changing the color, and it's not that great. Even if you do define full screen mode, you can still define this. I'm not sure if it affects anything like prompts, but that would be pretty cool. I'm not saying it does or not. I actually just thought of that, and I didn't test it. So theme color basically just controls the color of your URL bar or your nav bar at the top of your phone. Version, this is for your own edification. I'm not sure if this actually has anything to do with um, when the cache updates, but I don't have any caching going on in this web app. I'm going to save that for another tutorial, but this is just for you to keep track of what version your application is. And it may or may not be used for caching purposes, but since I'm, I'm not sure, I wouldn't even pay attention to that. I probably shouldn't even have said it. But this just records the version of your web app. So anyway, that is everything inside my manifest file. Best as I could, that's what I did there to explain each one, did the best that I could. If it's not enough, I suggest you go read up on this stuff. You don't need all these, but it was suggested in the documentation that I read. So uh, have fun, play around with it. Ones that you definitely want are display. You're definitely going to want an icon. You're definitely going to want a name and a short name, whichever one is important. I'm not really sure, but include both. Orientation, definitely important. Start URL, super important. And theme color, eh, pretty important. I mean, if you're not in full screen mode, you might want to set up a theme color, make things look cool. So that is my manifest. And that is how to install to home screen your very own super simple Android web app. In my next tutorial, I'm going to try to go over how to make that web app, app run in offline mode. Now, if you want to know how to get rid of the security warnings at the top of your page, if you're going to run this in your own development server, I have two other tutorials, which I'll link to in the description that go over how to create your very own Node.js secure server HTTPS server, as well as how to create your own self-signed certificate authority and all that cool stuff. So check those out if you want to develop on your own. If not, this should work fine. If you just upload this code to like your GitHub pages page, it should work just fine to install the home screen and you won't have security warnings in your web app when it runs on your phone and you won't have problems with your um, HTTPS security in your website either. So anyway, that is my little tutorial. Hope you guys learned something. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and that's it. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.